Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bhartia, and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us John Terrell, CISO at Phosphorus Security. John, it's great to have you on the show. I, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Today we are going to talk about XIoT security strategy from you know edge computing perspective. But before we deep dive into today's discussion, I would love to know a bit about Phosphorus Cybersecurity. Uh, Talk a bit about the company and what are your focus areas. Phosphorus is a really unique uh, uh, player in the XIoT world. We think of XIoT as kind of everything that's not traditional IT. So your IoT, your OT, your industrial control systems, like it's it, it's essentially everything you can't put an agent on. Um, and Phosphorus has uh, a, a product where they're able to both discover all of the kind of XAOT problems, but then also manage those devices. So they can do things like rotate passwords, upgrade firmware, uh, it, you know, a lot of the meat and potatoes of what do you do with these devices? And if you could talk all their native protocols, uh, what would be the way to kind of instrument and, and, uh, 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 kind of stretch the functionality that these things are are exposing to you. Excellent, thank you. Of course, uh, you did explain that, but just for our audience, uh, I mean, when we look at you know anything that is on the edge, uh, resource constraint, we you know we start calling them. Of course, uh, we can have a data center, but when you look at IoT devices, once again, it's hard to define how you define that. Uh, how different are IoT, traditional IoT devices from ex-IoT devices, and do they pose unique security challenges or no, it's the same? I just want to understand the definition of ex-IoT and yeah, what kind of so unique, yeah. The ex-IoT label is, is, is kind of inclusive of uh, both IoT, OT, and, and, and everything else you can't put an agent on. And I think the better term for this is cyber physical devices. And what I mean by that is that uh, these are not just kind of simple computers. These are uh, more, more specifically computers with a physical uh, kind of actuator in the real world. So uh, it's a computer with a, a thing attached to it. Uh, so a lot of times for, you know, the last 15 years or so, when we talked about people breaking into IoT or OT devices, they were breaking into the computer part. But when you start to manipulate the thing that's attached to it, you start seeing the real world side of it. So uh, the earliest option of this would be something like Stuxnet, right? They got into the computer, but then they affected uh, a bunch of centrifuges and actually broke stuff. We've seen this as recently with things like Frosty Goop. They got into the computer that impacted the HVAC system, but then they turned off heating for 800 apartment buildings and sub and sub zero at, at, at like temperatures. So it it is the cyber physical concept that's really the fascinating part of this. And 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 that's the XIO2 world. Excellent. Once again, thank you. And can you also talk about how unique the security challenges are? for XIoT versus just IoT? So the security challenges are, are really that we don't have the same tool chain. We don't have the same, uh, you know, the same ability to impact things. We're very dependent on vendors and what those vendors expose to us. So a lot of times the firmware is encrypted, you're only given limited functionality and everything's kind of different. Every vendor is a little different. The interface exposed is a, a bit different. Uh, the protocols are different. So you've got to find kind of a unified way to talk to these things. And that's really what Phosphorus has been focused on is how do you bridge that gap from what we thought the IT world had to how do you apply that to the OT and IoT world? Can you also talk about, depending on the reports, analysis, what kind of growth are you seeing of XIoT devices? Because you know the more devices there are, which means it's becoming more uh, challenging. And then we can also talk about what organizations are or can do to secure their devices. So talk a bit of the numbers. Yeah, sure. Right. 
So uh, I, I, I I could go on about this for <laughs> a while, uh, but you know the the numbers that we've seen. If we go back to like the mid '90s, the number of IoT and or, or this XIoT category, uh, you know, was in the thousands, coming up on the millions. Uh, as of the last couple of years, we were seeing a number that is coming up at like sixty billion. By twenty twenty five, we're looking at seventy billion devices globally. Uh, that's a huge number. Um, it if we think about this in contrast to the number of like cloud servers. Uh, we're talking a number like 10 million. And, that, and that's just a number that we back end from like an Amazon 8K, right? They've got roughly 60% of the market. They've also got about 6 million servers. That's roughly gonna mean that the whole market is like 10 million servers. Uh, from, an, you know, this devices of everything that's growing, whereas the number of servers and desktops out there is roughly staying static. It's flat. Uh, but yeah, 70 billion. So within the next year, we're going to see a jump from like 65 to 70. So 5 billion more devices. That's almost the number of people there are on the planet. Uh, it's a tremendous number of new, unique, weird computers that have this physical aspect to them. What are organizations doing right now to balance the, the operational efficiency because the devices are, you know, they cannot send teams all the time and zero compromise on security. And then we'll talk about how, how Phosphorus helps them. But let's talk about what they are doing and if you're happy with the current state of XIoT security. A lot of places are ignoring this problem. And I, I say ignoring it because uh, it's partly a willful not wanting to have to deal with it because uh, it's it's a hard problem. There's not a lot of, of, of easy options out there. And the other side of it is a, a lack of awareness about what the problem is. They either don't know that the devices are on their network because it's not the IT team that turned them on. It's facilities and corporate security and the, you know, the corporate IT experience team. But they didn't turn on a computer. They turned on a phone. They turned on a conference ring, uh, uh, a conference thing system. They turned on a camera. They turned on a door controller. These aren't computers for them. They're a different thing. But they are computers. They are computers with this cyber physical thing that impacts the real world. Um, and it's what there's this disconnect on and it's, it's that lack of understanding, uh, and also the ease of putting stuff on a network that leads to the sprawl where, uh, you know, on, on average, we see, uh, somewhere between three to five times the number of, of these XIoT devices as you have people. So if you've got 3000 people in an office, you probably have. 12 to 15,000 devices. And, and, and that shows up especially for kind of that white collar office job type of people. When you're talking healthcare, you're talking more like 10 times. When you're talking oil and gas, you're talking 20 to 25 times. Uh, so the, the vertical starts to matter, but if you're sitting in an office and, 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 and this makes sense why. Uh, everybody's got a phone at their desk, right? We've got cameras that are looking at doors. We've got door controllers. Um, we've got all these things. We've all got conference rooms. We've got all of the conferencing systems. Like every single conference room that you go into probably has 10 to 20 of these devices because that's how the lights start and you book the room and all of those types of things. So it's, it's everywhere and it's, uh, it, it's in everything that you do. And I think we really take it for granted. And it's that misunderstanding that every single one of these things has a tiny computer in them. They're on your network and they do something in the real world. And people might say, well, I don't care about cameras. 
uh, well, what are those cameras looking at? Uh, or they say, I don't care about phones. I'm like, yeah, well, what if it's the CEO's phone? Can I start to listen into what he or she is doing? Uh, it, can I listen into the boardroom and the run up to earnings? Well, we start to care about those things when we put it within that context. How is Phosphorus leveraging AI and automation uh, for for strengthening IoT or X IoT security? So the the AI part I think is really really fascinating, um, and we've got some brilliant engineers that have been working on this uh, to try to figure out um, when when you're talking about seventy billion devices, how do you do that at scale? Um, now. Uh, uh, we've got this concept of a genus species model where uh, essentially um, we, we can draw an analogy to biology um, to, to be able to look at, well, if you're Hewlett Packard, you might have 10 or 20,000 different types of printers. Well, how would you manage that if you're HP? And it turns out that they've got a uh, a fairly reduced number of like firmwares for each kind of generation or family or genus uh, for each one of these groups of printers. So if you can figure out the software for one, you get many. Um, so with, with that idea, we are able to manage a lot of different devices at scale. But from an AI perspective, some of the things that we've been doing are trying to, because we can kind of talk all the native languages for each one of these uh, devices, we're coming up with abstractions such that we can talk the protocol, but then we can also start to navigate what the devices do and build abstractions around how we start to, to, to interact with them. So if you think about like a change password uh, function, this is a thing that looks different on every single device. But if we've explored all the paths and how they start to talk, and we can talk all the native languages, we can then abstract that away. So you can think about that almost like a large, uh, large language model, where we can see it says change password, but it's just a different way of, of, of presenting that. So we can then have, well, we change a password in the abstraction, and then it talks all the different ways that these different devices are, are expecting it. So uh, I, I think the AI concept is something that we're, we're, we're definitely spending a lot of time on. Can you also talk about uh, the, the best practices, cultural aspect, what organizations should do to ensure a very good hygiene and you know security of their XIOT devices. A lot of my colleagues, especially those on, on on the sales team, would would tell you that this is cutting edge. It is, you know, the most advanced thing that you've ever seen, and it's the closest thing to magic. And there is some aspect of that that's true, uh, but I would tell you that this is back to basics. This is meat and potatoes. This is table stakes stuff. This is doing the things that you were going to have to do for the last 25 years. And we didn't do it for these types of devices because for the last 25 years, we've had this indoctrination uh, that these devices are required uh, to only be secured via passive collection. So think NetFlow, full packet capture, uh, that that kind of stuff. We can listen on the line, but we can never touch the device. What Phosphorus is doing different is they touch the device. They reach out in a safe way to interact with it the way that the device manufacturer has exposed to you. Like they give you a front end via web or SIP or S7 or you know whatever uh, other dozens of, of, of protocols exist, but um, they do this because, at the end of the day, we're not trying to secure you from the IoT devices. We're trying to secure the devices themselves. That plays into a lot of the segmentation stories and all this, where we're like, well, we don't know what these things do. We don't understand them. Well, we do. That's what Phosphorus does. We do understand them. We can fix the device itself. 
Because at the end of the day, the device is the target. That's what's going to be used to, you know, break a manufacturing facility or listen in to what the CEO is doing or, you know, whatever other scenario that you're thinking of. When you cross that cyber physical divide, uh, that's that's where those devices really come into play. Uh, so I, I think we're in this new era where we've got way more devices than we've ever conceptualized. And they play a way larger uh, uh, part of our lives than we've ever thought. And we've had far less of an understanding than we've ever had of them. Because we've just kind of neglected them and took them for granted. And uh, we have to get back to basics. Because that's what our, you know, our concept of traditional IT has to make its way into this IoT world. John, thank you so much for taking time out today. Talk to me about, of course, fast forward cybersecurity and this whole ex-IoT security, cybersecurity landscape. Thanks for great insights. I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a great conversation.